back to D&D Beyond. I am so excited to have Michael back with me today because it is brand new book announcement day. Michael, what have we got coming our way? Oh boy, I am really excited. This is the Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. Um, it's a new anthology book that's coming out. Um, if you're familiar with Candlekeep Mysteries or Dawns from the Yawning Portal, uh, this is kind of in that same vein where you are going to have numerous short adventures in a single book that you could run, uh, that you can inject into your campaigns, or even if you want, run an entire campaign just making your way through the adventures. So these are going to take you uh, between, these are appropriate for levels 1 through 14. We have some incredible art already to look at, to enjoy for the new book, Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. Right now we are looking at the cover art. Uh, which happens to correspond to one of the adventures that we might hear a little bit more about uh, and features the charming and mischievous Windling, who's early fave. Uh, I know I'm very predictable, but come on, look at that face. Look at those little feet seeds. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also, I am, I am a sucker for an implied narrative. Uh, so if you stare at this long enough, you get a whole story about what's going on um, in this particular place and time. So Journeys to the Radiant Citadel is going to come our way on June 21st, and you can pre-order it right now. But you can also learn more about it by clicking through to the article that we have up on the homepage. So that link is running in chat or it's in the description wherever you're watching this, um, because we already know a lot about what to expect from this book. As Michael said, it's going to consist of standalone adventures that you can drop into a campaign, string it together for yourself, or adapt to your world. And that's one of the things I really like about it, which we will circle back around to. But before we get there, the Radiant Citadel itself. This is brand new. This is a new setting located in the heart of the ethereal plane. And if we can see uh, a little hint of the flavor of this is contained in the beautiful, beautiful artwork that we have seen for what the alternate cover of the book is going to look like, um, which is a bunch of very gorgeous gem-like tones all surrounding uh, a central shape. Uh, and Michael, what is that central shape? Oh, wow. That central shape is the, it's called the auroral diamond i had it written down and yes the aurora diamond so the radiant citadel itself is carved from a single fossil of some now extinct enormous impossibly enormous creature that had um coiled itself around the aurora diamond the diamond itself is kind of a mysterious magical object um but it is a source of uh, for re sort of like resources for the Radiant Citadel, and it kind of just functions as that shining beacon that if you are lost in the um, ethereal plane or you are seeking the Radiant Citadel, that is sort of the light that you would see. That would be uh, the light that you would follow in order to find this incredibly unique city in the middle of a very misty uh, sort of kind of, in my opinion, creepy plain. Now, uh, here we go. This is the absolutely gorgeous alternate artwork, but it gives you a great sense of that shape shining in the middle um, that is the Radiant Citadel, a brand new setting. Now, the team that brought this book to life had a lot to do with the shape that this takes and the many, many places that we were going to go, as the title suggests, not just inside the Radiant Citadel, but through it on the way to adventure. Um, a really incredible, diverse team of writers, artists, and editors all contributed to make this a really special book, including uh, some friends of the stream, not to get ahead of ourselves, but friend of the stream and newly incarnated wizard uh, senior designer, Justice Armand, is one of the story writers on this. Uh, but one of the, the project leads, uh, along with F. Wesley Schneider, is uh, Ajit George, whom you might know from amazing work on Ben Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. So uh, some of the creators have already spoken about what they brought to this and why, because the places that we're going to go in these adventures are all brand new settings inspired by real life areas and histories and stories and storytelling traditions um, that, that folks have personal connections to. 
which has produced some really, really fun and unusual results uh, that I'm so excited to add to D&D. Um, but Michael, what is one reason that folks might be excited about grabbing this book, uh, whether or not they're just going to play them as intended? Um, I think for me, one of the really awesome things about Journey to the Radiant Citadel is the fact that the Radiant Citadel itself is setting agnostic. So if you were if you had picked up Candlekeep Mysteries, which is a fantastic book with a lot of really great mysteries, uh, but you are not within the Forgotten Realms, not playing within the Forgotten Realms, you might have had to make some tweaks in order to make uh, that book work for your particular setting. The Radiant Citadel, though, functions um, as a setting agnostic city, which you can kind of drop in very easily into uh, whatever city, setting you're working with, whether it's Eberron, Forgotten Realms, maybe your own homebrew world. Because, um, because it functions or it exists within the ethereal plane, um, it's very accessible because the ethereal plane kind of certain parts of it border the material plane. You know, you have your ghosts that, uh, you have ghosts which can jump between the ethereal plane and then the material plane. You have face spiders that can do the same thing. You even have spells that allow you to access the ethereal plane. So if you're, you know, if you have the Radiant Citadel within your setting, it's very easy, very easy. <laughs> it's very easy for adventurers. I don't know about commoners to kind of easily make that jump between like the material plane and going back to the Radiant Citadel to maybe find their next quest or maybe to take a, a bit of a break between adventures. And uh, in addition to the ways that basic, any, any version of the material plane in the multiverse can usually access the ethereal plane in a lot of ways we already know about. And if you're curious about planes, by the way, there is more information available. I feel like it's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's a very slight chance it's in the player's handbook but I think it's the Dungeon Master's Guide will give you your basics on the planes. Um, but there are now brand new ways to get to and from the Radiant Citadel, which have been designed to make this easy and fun for Dungeon Masters. Uh, and I think this is particularly cool. This is one of my favorite things that they did in this, is that the Radiant Citadel was founded uh, many, many years ago, originally by 27 different civilizations. Um, and the current city that exists there uh, consists of, um, I wrote down all of the numbers. Okay, um, I believe, check my math, 13 of the founding civilizations are currently represented. There are two more that are sort of uh, mysterious that you'll learn more about in the book, which leaves 12 missing ones. And the thing, the reason I stress that in terms of plugging this into your adventures is that there's something called a conquered jewel, Concord jewel. There we go. That's how you say it. Uh, has not been <laughs> conquered is of concordance, you know, a Concord jewel. Uh, there are a bunch of these incredibly cool, beautiful giant jewels orbiting the Radiant Citadel. And Michael, what do they do? What makes them special? So Concord jewels are building size. These are very massive, beautiful jewels. And the each jewel can travel between the Radiant Citadel and the original civilization that it is linked to, or the civilization it is linked to. So these function as a way for individuals from the Radiant Citadel to go and visit these civilizations to send supplies, uh, maybe use it for diplomacy or for trade, which is really neat because it links the civilizations of the Radiant Citadel with the original civilizations that are responsible for the founding of the Radiant Citadel. And of course, they have left space there for your homebrew worlds and your chosen destinations to potentially be among those missing uh, founding origins for this place, which means each one could come with a jewel that will take you and your party back and forth, uh, should it be desired, to and through the Radiant Citadel, which I think is just so cool, like the uh, official space for you to write that in there. Um, in addition to the fact that there's going to be guidance for using these existing settings um, in lands you might already be playing in, ideas and inspiration, as we've seen in a lot of recent books, for how to map this onto stuff you're already doing. Um, or you can just treat it as is. And Michael, what are we going to get a little taste of in some of these adventures? Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, we got a little taste of a few adventures, which I'm really excited about. Um, I did want to add, though, with the Concord Jewels, what's really fun about them, and you mentioned this, is that because that there is space for you 
to say, oh, there are other Concord jewels that are missing. It's very easy. They've the designers of this and the writers of this book have made it very easy for you to let's say that you are running a um Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Hey, great adventure. If you're running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, you can have your characters discover a Concord jewel and have them discover that one of the civilizations responsible for the creation of the Radiant Citadel, you know, maybe it was uh, individuals from Icewind Dale. And so that's how you link that particular part of the Forgotten Realms over to the Radiant Citadel. Or let's say that there is a disaster happening in some major city that the the players are are in and they're trying to save the city. A Concord Jewel could make an arrival. And then that, as a dungeon master, is your way of pulling the players into this book and into all of the great adventures there. Now, on the adventures themselves, uh, you're going to get a, a big variety here. Um, but there was pretty much there's there's a flavor for everyone, right? So as you'll see um, in the first adventure that we have, it's very whimsical. It's comedic, uh, written by Serena Marie. Salted Legacy is going to be our sort of introductory, our introduction into the journeys of the Radiant Citadel. It's the first level adventure of the book, and it's a comedic mystery. And it takes you to the, the Ding Sing Night Market, where the characters discover an intergenerational feud between rebel vendors, and the characters have to work to earn the trust of those people who work within the market in order to solve this sort of mystery of vandalism and theft that is occurring and kind of uh, help people, help uh, these two rival vendors come to peace. Or maybe not. I don't know how your how your players will handle it. But you'll find that with that particular adventure, it's very fun. It's lighthearted. It's a nice little romp through a colorful market, which you see represented in the cover art. But then you also have adventures that are horror related. So the third level adventure written by Aaron Roberts, Aaron Roberts, written in blood, has you investigating a haunting at um, a celebration held in swampy farmlands. So if your players lean more one way, they let's say that they really loved Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and they're like, I want more of that, then that's something that you can offer them. But if they want more horror, maybe they want something that's more combat driven, maybe something that is more has a lot more political intrigue, you're going to find those flavors throughout these adventures that are offered in the book. And I believe we have one more sneak peek we can show from the, uh, yes, a third adventure that we've gotten a little bit of a look at. This one written by a friend of the stream, Justice Arman, uh, is going to feature another of these, again, brand new settings with their own monsters and NPCs and intriguing adventure hooks uh, and advice for sort of potentially that like you could use, these are these are brand new lands. You could slot them in your worlds if you want them to, you could be from there. Um, they have all the fodder for imagination that you might want um, from these uh, incredibly talented group of designers. So to, to run down just a few of the contributors we know about for these wonderful, uh, adventures. We know that this is the work of a huge team, including Justice Armand, Dominique Dickey, Ajit George, Bashir Gauss, Alistair Guzman, D. Fox Harrell, T.K. Johnson, uh, Felice Kwan, Serena Marie, Mimi Mondo, Ma Mario Ortegon, uh, Miyuki Jane Pinkard, Pam Punzalan, Aaron Roberts, Terry H. Romero, Stephanie Yoon, and many, many more. Just an incredible lineup. Uh, of folks bringing their talents and experience and uh, ideas together to make journeys through the Radiant Citadel. So let's see, I think we had a couple questions come in that let's try to to take a quick look at. I moved all my windows, I'm professional. <laughs> um, Dennis, ha Dennis Hapta asks, is that a goldfish in the fish tank? Uh, and well spotted, we'll have to, I don't know if it has a mysterious nature, but it sure looks like a, a, a fantastic little little fishy there hmm? i was i was thinking that too when i saw this artwork i was like is that xanathar's fish <laughs> uh no idea but hey it it certainly looks like it um cj Gardo has are the adventures standalone or do they have a connecting thread um and to some extent that could be sort of spoiler territory they certainly function standalone perfectly well 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so the purpose of these adventures is to function both standalone, but also um, have that Radiant Citadel connecting them. So in this way, you have the founder civilizations and the assumption here is that the Conqueror Jewels will kind of take you between these civilizations where you'll have these adventures. And we do get a nice chunk of setting information for the Radiant Citadel itself alongside those other things. We have... Um, let's see. I think some of these are too spoilery for me to grab now. Some are things we're going to get to talk about later. Um, so thank you all so much for, for your great questions. Uh, and, um, and I think... With that, we will have much more time between now and June 21st to show off and talk about some of the wonderful stuff there is to find in Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel as uh, the next book with a brand new setting and standalone adventures to slot into your streams, into your home campaigns, uh, into whatever you'd like is coming our way. Uh, and I hope that you will check it out.